Recorded at 2023's Equip and HNA show in Louisville, Kentucky, here's your host, TV personality and hardscapes contractor, Matt Blashaw. All right, your name? Amanda. Great, and then uh, name of the company, your position? A&F Lawn Care. Um, just work in the office. That's, you don't just work in the office. Wife you work the in owner. the office. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's a big business. Yes. Oh, well, you're the wife of the owner too? Wife of the owner. Boy, you you and my wife should have like a conversation, <laughs> right? So you guys, um, softscape, hardscape, what, what's what's your scope of work? It's, uh, landscape, lawn cutting, hardscaping, excavating, construction. He does it all. Design, build. Yes. Okay. So t- how, how did the how did the business start? So we bought our house in 2012, and we got a little tiny mower. It broke. I think my father gave it to my husband, and my husband went out and bought a big lawn mower, push mower, like a 48 inch. And I'm like, what the Go hell big. are you going to do with this on this little piece of property? It's such so I something said, I would do. So I told him to get out there. And go mow lawns. Now, he already worked for our municipality doing um, our water and sewer. Nice. So he did that, and he did like four or five lawns for the first season. Got a little bit bigger, bigger, bigger. And then in 2019, he decided to tell me he was leaving the borough. This is where a full paycheck came from. Oh, man. Pension? Pension. Oh, man. Insurance. Uh Uh-huh. The best was he told me when I was on the table having my son and my arms were strapped (laughs) and (laughs) I couldn't do anything about it. I don't know if that's genius or cruel, (laughs) right? Yeah, because what are you going to say? Exactly. Well, I bet it helped to push. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I wasn't even pushing. No. no, 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 I was half out of it. Oh my gosh! Wow, you guys are still married. We're still married. Okay, great. Just celebrated great. ten years marriage. So, so congratulations. Thank you. So the business has done well. Obviously, you guys are here. The business is unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about that, and this is great because I talk to a lot of contractors, you know, that are actually in the field, but you're in the office, which is which is great. You're you're hearing the calls, right? You're seeing the calls. You're customer relation all right yep. so tell me about the industry right now what are some of the challenge that you are seeing uh in the industry now whether that's you know uh, uh you know supplies right uh, materials employees all right um employees okay. that is the biggest thing you're not able to find employees mm-hmm. um the other thing is the amount of calls because people want their job done right then and there Yep. Um, we are booking out actually right now to 2024. Awesome. So we are booking out to 2024 right now. Awesome. Um, and it's just keeping that workflow. Um, and where we are in southern New Jersey, um, we go from one extreme to the next. You do your spring cleanups, your lawn mowing and everything in the summertime, and then you go into your fall stuff, and now we're getting ready for the winter. So now it goes into the plowing, the salting. So it's just, it's a lot of different things. What do you attribute your success to? Is there any one thing? I mean, it's not, it's not one thing, but is there something that you're like, gosh, I did this and, and it really boosted my business? Uh, Was it advertising? Advertising. What, and word of mouth. Actually, the biggest thing now, and we keep hearing from all of our customers is Companies have gotten so big, and it's the customer relationship. Um, a lot of people are saying to us now, especially my husband when he goes out, is you're one of the only people that have called me back. You're one of the only people that have answered your phone where other companies are not answering their phone and all. So it's that customer relation um, ship. And then just kind of keeping the job open, open communication. You know, I, I, I was with uh, a big bank, and uh, I live in Kansas City now, and it's a bank. It's called Country Club Bank. Okay. When I call, a human picks up the phone. Yes, you they don't get that. N- no, there's no automated. Nope. It's such a difference. Yes. I was like, here, take all my business. Yep. Because they want that personal relationship. They want to just talk to somebody, not, exactly. a, not a machine. Exactly. Yeah, which is awesome. All right, so um, tell me what the challenge is about your job, right? You're, you're, you're in the office, right? You're doing a lot of the... So I have to say, um, partial in the office. I do like a lot of the banking part of it, doing payments and all. 
I also have my own full-time job. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, I also have my own full-time job. What do you do? What's, what's your full-time job? An auditor in affordable housing. Oh my gosh. Well, that's actually really good. Yes. To be an auditor. Yes, I'm an auditor. That's really important mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I don't know if your husband's like me, but I, I, I don't want to do auditing, yeah. numbers, anything like that. You guys are a, kind of a match made in heaven. Yep. So does that relate to your business, to the, his business? No, because I'm in affordable housing. So I okay. see like people moving into like affordable Section 8 housing mm -hmm. and everything. So I approve them to move in and look for a lot of fraud. Mm -hmm. So that's my job. So I'm more into that type of thing. But I also make sure that if he needs help, uh, my husband goes away a lot. Um, so if the guys need me to do something, help with the changes, schedules around, I will take that part of the business over um, when he's away. Um, and then also we have a four-year-old, so constantly, oh yeah, keeping that under control too. I got, I got a five-year-old. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It just gets, it just gets more interesting. It does. Yeah. As, <laughs> it does. as, as we go. Yes. All right. So, um. So how is you, the clients? You talk to clients. Do, do you have a client relationship or not really? Some clients. Okay. Um, how about the, how's the expectations have changed over the years? I know you just said that was something interesting. I want my job done and I want a job done now. Exactly. How do you kind of set that expectation at the beginning? Actually, our office manager does tell them when they put in that deposit and everything that we are booked so far out. People don't care. They want that quality of work. That's awesome. Yeah. So how, how is how's that quality of work? Where does that come from? Does that come from attention to detail? Is that your 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 employees? Because you have employees, right? Yes. Okay. Have you taught them? Have you trained them? Like, wh how do you give them these tools? My husband trains them. Trains yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Is and it, he's very particular how things need to look. So he's on the job. He's, he's like on the job. Yes. Okay. How long is that taken to to kind of get his employees to a place where he's not sitting to have them babysit? How long does that take? Our guys, I mean, we found a good, good crew right now. Mm -hmm. um, they've been with us, I want to say, four years now. So um, he just has trained them, brought them on, and then he watches them, and then he teaches them, and then he leaves for a little bit. Then he comes back, and if they do something wrong, he'll show them. Um, and then they just keep coming back yeah well because i mean it's not doing something wrong right right well, he you, wants to teach him the correct way exactly or i always say you do do something wrong but let's learn from it exactly right and, and, and as long as these guys are you know learning from it and saying like okay cool this is how i can do it and wanting to learn those are the best people in the world yep all right so you do snow plow too right yes he does snow okay snow which is which is important because you're in um southern new jersey southern new jersey so what town is that berlin berlin okay yep. I love it out there. Yeah. Yeah, that was so my favorite. Well, what do you like? Do you like the, what, what kind of cheesesteak? What is it? The, what are the two shops? Oh, uh, it's Jim's and... Jim's and... Um, what's the one on the other side? Oh, goodness. What is it? Pat's. Pat's. Yeah. What do you like better? Jim's. Jim's. Yeah. You know, mine my, my was, my was on the, uh, on actually Brook. Is it, uh, what, what's what's the main drag? Broad? Broad. Broad. Yep. Yeah. Mike's. Yep. Yeah. Mike's was the place to go. Um, all right. So what would you give advice to someone that want, wanting to start this business to young to young women out there to young men out there what what advice would you give them because you've seen your husband go through everything mm -hmm. you're in the office what does it take to run you guys a very successful it sounds like business what does it take to to, to accomplish that um first i will say if you have a spouse it is always good to support mine was a lot of support for my husband um, he will come home, ask me questions. Um, what should I do here? What should I do there? Open communication. That is the one thing is open communication. Don't overextend yourself. Um, when we first started out, my he bought like a couple things here and there. Now we have the excavators, the skid steers. He just, as we were here yesterday, he got approved for a brand new loader that's coming. Oh, man. So, toys, toys, yeah, toys. So it's, don't overextend yourself. It takes time. I mean, we started that business in 2014 is when he formed that LLC. We are now in 2023. Got the excavator last year, loader this year. Just don't 
because that's what happens. People go gun ho in the beginning and then they just fall apart because they, whether they can't afford the stuff, they don't have the amount of work to pay for it. Um, and another thing I am going to say, and it happened this past year to my husband, a landscaper started um, a new company in our town about four streets over. And my husband, young kid, went up to him and said, um, how's business going? Not anything else, just how's business going? And the guy turned around, I'm going to take the biz business from the two biggest landscapers in this area. Uh. And Fred goes out, oh, he goes, I'm going to put them under, I'm going to show everybody else a better job and everything. He goes, uh, especially A&F Lawn Care. No. That's us. <laughs> And my husband turned around, pulled open his shirt, and said, I'm the owner oh of A&F Lawn gosh. Care. Foot and in now, mouth. Yes, it was yeah. foot in mouth. <laughs> and actually now Fred um, kind of like has taught him something. Oh, like, what a good man. But, yeah. Good man. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't, you can't be that way. You cannot ban mouth a company. No. Trust me, our biggest competitor in town. It's kind of a, um, I don't know, I would say not energy or or. You just want to keep that positivity. Exactly. And, 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 and I, I let my, I know a couple landscape companies and we all get lunch together. Yep. I let them borrow my tractor from time to time. Yep. Like the more the good you put out, these are guys that are in your trade. Exactly. Yeah. Be a brotherhood. Exactly. Be together. It's not necessarily about a competition because there's, there's plenty of work. Exactly. Right. But just, you know, be good people. Right. And yep. that good is going to come back to you. And it's obviously shown because you guys are booked out a year. That's very hard for people to say. Booked out a year. Yeah. And it was interesting what you said about growing slowly. Yes. Because I just had a gentleman here that bought all the trailers. No. All of the. He, he, and he was. He goes, what am I going to do with this? That machine has to make money for you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. If it's not making money, it's sitting there doing nothing. You're yep. just paying on it. So. Yep. And that was those. the biggest thing with the loader that we just bought. It's over eighty thousand dollar piece of equipment he just bought, and the biggest thing was the we do a plow for Walmart, do their um, salting and plowing Great for contract. Walmart's up in North Jersey. Awesome. And the one place Fred said to him, "I'll keep the equipment there, but I need so much money." So they actually have we actually have that loader is paid for for i think it's nine months i want to say payments are paid for so for the first nine months to keep the equipment up at one of their places in walmart they're going to be paying us that's so, awesome yeah and that was his biggest thing why we got it that's fantastic now, yeah. now hopefully we'll get a nice big snow couple snowstorms and it will pay for itself let it snow exactly all right now the well, last question is um so did Fred make the right decision when he quit his job? He did. Yes. <laughs> he did, especially because he could be that dad that makes time for our son, Ryder. Um, so if I need him to go pick up Ryder from daycare or something, or God forbid something happens to me and I need to get to the doctors or something, she's a phone call away. And trust me, being... It was scary move. I'm not going to absolutely say it was yeah. very, very scary, but I want to trade it for the world. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you Great. so much. Nice to be here. Thanks for tuning in to Confessions of the Craft. Ensure you never miss an episode by subscribing to the podcast so you can be the first to hear new episodes and discover previous ones. Follow Site One on Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn for the latest trends and industry updates.